Hi there, Coach Sage Candy of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about trying to reduce the risk of injury, overuse injury mainly is what we're talking about, because running, distance running is a very demanding sport. Uh, there's a lot of impact, repetitive strain, there's a lot of things when you're pushing your limits with the distance you run or the miles per week, kilometers per week you run, uh, you're really pushing your body to its limit, trying to train and get super fit and super strong, but a lot of overuse injuries with tendon issues bone issues, uh, muscle failure types of things from Achilles tendonitis, shin splints, uh, bone fractures, especially in the tibia, things like that, uh, but also muscle tightness, muscle imbalances. And some of these things are innate. Sometimes you have wonky running form, right? I don't have perfect running form. I've tried to improve it over the years, always conscious of running form. But if you have bad technique, you could injure yourself. If you have shoes that are ill-fitting or uh, not the proper shoes running on pavement, it's really hard. It's an artificially hard service get a lot of impact force, you could cause some injuries. And then upping your training uh, is mainly what we're going to talk about in this, as well as some preventative strength and exercises you could do to improve your flexibility, mobility, but also reduce that, uh, also just reduce your, or increase your range of motion, I should say, uh, and not get so many muscle imbalances that tweak your form and cause uh, these types of injuries. So basically, the number one thing uh, that I want to cover in this video is actually the training and the different strategies you could do that I've found in my 21 years. I've been running year round 21 years. I've never had an overuse injury knock me out for more than two or three weeks at a time. Just recovering now from a sudden blow injury from falling during races. I do fall a lot during races and gotten stitches and I had, I had mono once and I had to take two months off from running, but that's the longest break I've ever taken from distance running in the last two decades. Uh, run super high mileage, been running over 100 miles a week a lot of times. 160k per week for the last uh, over 10, 12 years uh, was when I ran my first volume that high. So, you know, part of it's genetics. I'm not going to lie to you. Part of it's the running form, which I touched on. But that ties in directly to things like, like nutrition. And yes, I just changed spots. Um, so, you know, your nutrition and lifestyle factors actually could turn on genes on and off. So it's not just, oh, I'm born with a certain innate ability for good running form or not or being more resistant to injury there's durability factors in that but there's lifestyle factors that you know things like sleep lack of stress in your everyday life uh, getting enough sleep to recover and having that as well as your nutrition your diet right eating a lot of antioxidants plant-based diet is the way i've been going uh, reduces inflammation and helps you recover faster from hard workouts and long runs high mileage because uh, reducing inflammation is really the name of the game and recovery so there's diet things and, and then there's things in training that you could change and we'll get into a couple strength exercises uh we'll go indoors for that and some stretching that i'll do before and after a run as well as some tools i use but the main thing i wanted to talk about in this video is different from all the strength training to make yourself bulletproof body uh, from getting injured which is very very important is the fact that the biggest thing you could probably do is monitor your training so that you're not increasing your mileage too quickly or adding in too much speed work too fast, right? Number one thing is to be training in a progressive manner so that you're slowly building up the duration and distance of your runs. You're trying to run on soft surfaces and avoiding pavement. You're rotating your shoes. You're, you're following a training plan where you're not running hard every day. You don't have to go out most days and push, push, push. Most people go too fast on their easy days. They need to relax, run with good form, get the miles in, slowly build up that tendon and muscle strength and the bone density. Uh, and that's another thing, vitamin D and sun exposure and your diet, and calcium. A lot of leafy greens have a lot of good calcium source in there. I'll just throw that out there too. Uh, is that, you know, you're trying to build a stronger body and you're trying to build your aerobic system, but you have to do it slowly. You have to be patient and it takes a while to build up to higher mileage totals. And that's really the key to long-term improvement. It's consistent high mileage, but you got to stay healthy to be able to do that. And so number one thing is looking at your training and say, Hey, am I pushing too fast too early? If I get injured, do I take a long enough break and come back from injury? I've been running pain free the last two days after my sudden fall injury, my MCL injury. It only took me out for a week and a half, two weeks tops really uh, and I could still cross train ride my bike so I have some aerobic fitness as well but uh, you know don't come back too fast if you have a stress fracture or you have Achilles tendon Sandy had Achilles tendon surgery right 
She had to take a long time off after that and do special exercises to get back into it. But those are more extreme examples. Uh, and you could be trying to lose weight at the same time. And so your body's going through some changes and, you know, you'll get efficient and faster, but you have to be patient. You have to slowly build up. And it may take a matter of weeks. It may take a matter of months. It may even take a matter of years, right? So the number one thing is don't rush into too much high training, high intensity, high volume. Don't do all these crazy exercises all the time that'll overextend you, right? Overextend you, cause a muscle tear, muscle strain. You're getting tendonitis. That's when you know you have to be smart and you have to back off from your training. So the number one thing is just looking at your running training and your physical exertion and dial that back uh, to help balance. It's a, it's a tough balance. I've overdone it sometimes, overtrained, but it's a tough balance with injury, staying healthy, and pushing yourself to the extreme to get to that next fitness plateau or that next fitness level to improve in an extreme sport like distance running, especially if you're doing the longer distance races over half marathon, marathon, even ultra marathon. So it'll be very stressful, but a lot of the thing is comes down to taking your easy days easy. Now we'll go inside here real quick for some things I do before run now, especially to get the glutes activated, stretch out my hip flexors, which are a big problem for a lot of people, especially if you're uh, in your thirties or forties or fifties or older, uh, cause it, you know, lifestyle factors again, play into this. So we'll go inside now and do a real quick rundown. So as I'll plug uh, one of my sponsors, Copper Sager. All right. So this is pre run. I haven't run yet. I want to warm up the calf muscles using a tool. Uh, it's obviously a sponsor plug, but Copper Sager and her code Sage 10 for a discount. Copper Sager. I'll put the link to the website below. Uh, nice copper tubing that's filled with a fluid that you could actually uh, put in the freezer for cool therapy probably do that after but right now we're going heat friction therapy uh, rubbing on the back of the calf muscle I got the soleus going into the Achilles tendon kind of just warm up that area massage out the kinks in the calf up to the gastrocnemius uh, the upper part of your your calf there so you know good way to kind of get the blood flowing warm things up uh, so it's not a shock if you've been having some tight calves or Achilles types of problems. Of course, after the run, we'll do a whole another routine uh, with some gentle stretching, uh, but this is more dynamic. And this is just a simple tool that you could use. Copper Sager, again, this is a sponsor plug. Also some basic bridge exercises. A basic bridge stretch here. Uh, to stretch out the hip flexors in the front and the sides of your hips, but also to activate the glutes, right? Glute activation. You sit at a desk, office job, or uh, sitting in your car, transportation, uh, you, you get this tip, tight hip flexors, then you don't activate the glutes. The glutes, the butt muscles go dormant. We need to activate these guys to get some power. So we're kind of slowly stretching, but then we're going to thrust upwards and we're going to tighten, squeeze our butt cheeks basically, tighten up, get some glute activation there, try to get this plane between my shoulders or at least my pecs to my knees kind of in a straight line and focusing in on tightening the butt muscles rather than contracting the quads right we don't want to be too quad dominant and that's kind of the problem i get into but starting off gently doing that you're also stretching the hip flexors by thrusting that hip forward uh and just kind of surging upwards like that trying to just tighten hold for like three seconds tighten those glute muscles butt muscles uh, and you're also getting that stretch on the front of the hip flexors, side of the hip flexors, and uh, to do that, uh, some repeats of that to get that glute activation firing, but also to gently stretch out the hip flexors. And we'll get into some more stretching after the run, after we've warmed up the muscles and tendons, because that's really important. It's not just about strength or muscle activation, it's also about flexibility, ease of movement, and not getting too tight or too restricted uh, to inhibit your running form and cause muscle mounts and things like that. All right, so that was before the run. Now I just went out for uh, easy. I'm just running, it was my second day back, so I just ran uh, three miles, about 5K, uh, really being cautious with that. It's not that I couldn't run 10 miles or 16K, I'm just being extra, extra cautious. I might even take a day off and then get back into it slowly going at a really easy pace. But after the run, this is what I do, uh, some post-run exercise routine. A lot of it focuses around the core, so we'll go back inside for that. All right, so I finished my run now. Uh, muscles are warmed up. Uh, just, you know, a couple minutes after the finishing run. Plug here, sponsor plug, Drymax Sage Runner Sock. Check them out, Drymax Sage Runner Sock. Uh, I don't get blisters on my feet when I run all these races and train over high mileage. But anyway, 
want to get some basic stretching. I've done some tutorials on basic stretches, uh, and Sandy also covered that with more of the dynamic stretching. Because we're focusing on the hip flexors and kind of the, that kind of core, I'm going to focus on trying to alleviate that. So focus on stretching the quads, stretching out that hip flexor, working on the core. And again, we've done a lot of these videos on dynamic stretching. Definitely check out Sandy's channel on that. But, you know, the basic, call this the, the playboy stretch, right? You cross over, try to hug your knee to stretch that glute. Uh, it's a real basic one, as well as my favorite hip flexor stretch. Standing up, doing like a lunge. Got my knee back here. Uh, trying to straighten up through the hip here. Um, and thrusting this hip kind of forward really is, is a key here, right? Your hip bone is forward in this, this L-shaped motion. You don't need to lean forward too far, but also straightening up by lifting the arms up over your head, trying to stretch out this area here. Uh, your hip flexor connects through the, the core, through your stomach actually, into the spine uh, in your back. So you gotta stretch uh, muscle as well as the hip flexor down into the IT band. And uh, you, in this case, the, the back of the leg, the hamstrings and the glutes are pretty loose, but you feel that stretch right in here and you kind of lean forward into it. Uh, make sure you get a good stretch there. I'm just holding these for about 20 seconds, more static, not super dynamic. So the final stretch, and sorry, you can see all our auxiliary uh, recovery tools in there. Got a rapid uh, reboot as well as some bands, but uh, is to actually do this similar motion here but what I have is I have my foot back on the futon here. You could use a couch or a bed or step or even up against the wall. Uh, I'm not very flexible though, so this is kind of hard for me, but it stretches the front of the quad here. And again, we're trying, we're not hunching over like this. We're trying to stay upright and keep that hip bone forward, keep that pelvis rotated nice up and down, not too bucket shaped either way. Uh, but also getting that foot, that heel elevated, kind of leaning back so your butt's going towards your heel. Uh, again, I'm really quad dominant. Really stretches on that quad there. Stretches also up through there and uh, just kind of getting the arms elevated, leaning back into that. It's another great stretch. Uh, you don't want to go too far forward with this knee over the heel here. Uh, a lot of strain on the patellar tendon, things like that. You want to minimize that. So that's the idea with that stretch. You switch over to the other side. I can't see that as well. I'm not ready for the ball it's too advanced for me right now. But uh, other basic things with the core is, of course, the abdominal muscles. And not just the abs and the upper abs. You know, you're doing a regular crunch like this, working the upper abs, which is great. I used to do eight-minute abs all the time as part of my routine. But actually working the lower abs, that lower six-pack, and thinking my belly button's going down into the floor. I'm exhaling, keeping the belly button down into the floor. Then maybe I'm doing just working my legs, doing this leg exercise using my leg weight to keep that belly button down into the floor, nice and tight on the lower abs, and this lifting action with the quads, and my legs shifting the weight, is what's working the abs, right? And it's working those lower abs to target. And of course you could do all sorts of variations on those, but I'm trying to exhale as I squeeze together my knees to my elbows. But getting in that dynamic leg motion, the lower leg action engages more of that lower ab rather than if you're just crunching up here like this it's only going to be working the upper abs and you want to work all of your whole six pack hopefully as well as uh, down into that core and down more towards your hip flexors things like that so that's just another consideration of some of my core routine we'll get more videos on into this in the future but that's a, a real basic after run type of thing that i do pretty much every day and with the strength exercises of course sandy's done a whole routine on her website, Coach Sandy Nightpaver, so check that out. Running Wild to Believe is her YouTube channel. I'll put a link to one of those videos. She has many videos on core strength and all these specific exercises you could really do to improve your running form and help reduce the risk of injury, but uh, I'll put a link to it right there. All right, so now that you've seen those things, again, you can check out Sandy's strength training video. She's done really great routines. Running Wild to Believe is her channel. Uh, there's more informative stuff on here on the Sage Running uh, platform. Uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well as our Facebook page. Uh, we also have a Sage Running YouTube channel, but most of the training talks I'll do on here. And so be sure to subscribe. Uh, thanks to the Patreon supporters for really making this possible. New updated audio gear as well as the podcasting gear. More podcasts coming your way, stuff you guys like to hear about. Again, we'll do uh, Sandy's video as well as link to it in the description below as well as at 
Copper Sager uh, product that I endorse and use, enter code SAGE10 for a discount there. Thank you so much, guys. Really hope your running is going well, and stay tuned for more Sage Running videos.